The eternal dawn of our penances heralds its imminent end. Each was born to put an end to the other. Now both await, but while yours slumbers, mine remains vigilant. May the miracle bear witness to this oath. By which I remain here for our long-awaited meeting. Wounded by the silence of this secluded existence. The miracle has returned. Many eons ago, there was a supernatural triune, lusting for immortality that weaved the miracles in twisted forms the High Wills. However, by the hands of the Penitent One, his guilty blade coated by the Bloods of Abomination and Chrysanta of the Rapt Agony, unshackled from the miracle that bound her, the Divine Trinity's desire came to a close in a turn. But the return of the miracle happens where none expected at a time long after the death of the Penitent One. From a married couple, their hearts torn for their inability to conceive a child. In desperation, they earnestly pleaded to the miracle that is long gone from this land, and soon awaking from its long slumber. The miracle bestowed the couple a child with its radiant blessing. But perchance the miracle had laid dormant for far too long, but the mother gave birth to not a child, but a curse that deformed all that it shall touch. And as the miracles spread out like a contagion, this land was once again pululated by the miracle's monstrosities. It was then, when a great heart descended from the crimson clouds, a child of the miracle, asleep within the heart. Before this new wondrous manifestation, faith of the miracle was restored in this desperate land. And at its core was the Arch Confraternity. Those in penance chosen by the miracle were under the leadership of Eviterno, the first and the father of all penitents, Chrysanta who suffered the inexplicable horrors of the miracle firsthand, continued her fight against the Arch Confraternity, but eventually succumbed to the miracles chosen. Standing victorious, the Arch Confraternity embraced the burden of watching over the heart till the day the child of the miracle will be born. And in this land plagued by the cursed miracle once more, Time passes again. A thousand years since the death of the High Wills, Penitent One reawakens from his tomb. As to what summoned he who performed his penance back to this land, the 
Penitence One could soon find his answer. Penitent One, returned from the tomb, and walking among the mourners, your awakening is now written on the eternal pages. Anunthiada is my name, and I hail from the heavenly mountains on high, the seat and the beginning of all that is holy, so that I may address you. Anunthiada. Having descended from the heavenly mountains, far above the other side of the dream, she warns of the miracle's conception of a child in a great heart, and advises to defeat the Arch Confraternity's free guardians, collapsing the statues that bear on their shoulders the, the city from on high. Still, three regrets in the consciences of three of its guardians. Only by revealing them shall you achieve the humiliation of the sculpted figures that hold up the city, allowing you to ascend to its upper reaches, and finally to the Great Heart. Look for the Guardians. Soon, just as Anunthiada has warned, the Penitent One faces again the twisted manifestations of the Miracle. Although his blade, the Mea Culpa, has dissipated, where a thousand years have passed, three holy weapons were listening to assist on his journey. From Veredicto, with might that could shatter the earth, burning with the flame of retribution. Sarmiento and Centella with tempests of flurries striking at its foes like lightning and Luego Al Alba shredding through flesh with sawtooths leaving naught but splatters of blood. The Penitent One wields the free instruments at his will. And, with the root that has now engulfed his arm, the Penitent One executes those under the service of the Miracle. As he sets foot on yet another arduous pilgrimage. Through the City of the Blessed Name, established under the Heart of the Miracle, the Penitent One progresses through the grills and ruin, as he enters the Palace of the Embroideries, walking past the trespassers entangled in threads, like flies caught in a spider web. The Penitent One confronts First Guardian. Welcome to this palace. How silent, how mundane these luxurious chambers have been. Dance now with my steel, Penitent One. We will embroider your flesh in sacred torment, in a tapestry of blood and gold. On guard! Orospina, first of the confraternity of embroiders, guarding the secrets of the ancient needle and the thread. A rapier thrusting forth, as she dances freely on golden threads, was evocative of an equilibrist's performance. But as the clashes between blades grew fiercer, 
it was time to knot the end of the thread. With her regret instilled within her revealed. Twilight invites me to close my eyes. The upper city starts to descend, continuing on his journey to the sacred entombment. The penitent one treads through the ashes as he slays the hordes of the miracle. emerging from the clouds of dust and confronts the second guardian. Billowing clouds of dust herald your arrival. Dust in the air that is born from the erosion of the walls, the statues, and our own bones. Penitent one, you will now reveal your sins, those that your tears can never atone for. Great Preceptor Rodimus. Hearing the confessions of devotees, and thus containing their sins, his flesh was left devoid of all senses. And soon, the cacophony of a thousand echoes bursted from his body, to which eroded the walls that held the monastery, sepulchring himself beneath the ashes. Wielding a club fortified by the bones of his priest, and shards of glass sprouting on his body, Radamis overwhelms the penitent one. Revealing his massive figure, Radames emancipates the sins within him. Yet his brittle and fractured skeleton trembled all the same by the penitent one's steel. And so with Radames's regret day, revealed, already puts out its celestial light, the upper city descends further. On to his next objective, the penitent one enters the quieter of thorns. Whoa, whoa, more spikes? A parade of spikes laid throughout the forest. <sighs> Wonder what bullshit awaits this time. Oh ho ho! Spikes don't kill you instantly, you say? Saluting to the developer's generosity and feeding the hungry crows on his path. The penitent one reaches the crown of towers as he overcomes more elaborate obstacles and the hordes of the miracles stood in his path. Confronts the third guardian. I live. I live again inside this merciless and cold metallic casing. I live in this cage in the shape of what was long ago my body. Lesmus, incorrupt sacristan. Upon execution, his decapitated head was stolen by an Infanta and encased behind a cold metallic Aegis to which had been safeguarding the crown of towers thus far. Slamming a giant coffin into the ground with bursts of fiery pillars, Lesmus blockades the Penitent One's progression.
the Infanta who stole Lesmus' head lunges forth with her thorn sprouted off. And as Lesmus raised himself up once more, the penitent one must stay focused against the unfavorable contention. With the final regret of Lesmus revealed, from which one never wakes, awaits. The upper city is finally lowered to the ground. Now the penitent one needed to ascend toward the heart. But the encounters he met in this land reminded him of the curses borne by the miracles of Custodia. Cesario who suffered the loss of his wife and grown desperate with his child starving in his arms, he sued his dead wife's breasts onto his chest, pleading for the miracle in the hopes of being able to feed his child. And so the miracle graciously received his entreaty, except his breast lactated not milk but wax. And the child fed with wax was slowly congealed. Comes punishment, and punishment itself becomes holy and pure. Here is another man indebted to the miracle. A man who dreamt of a beehive swarming into his body. Yet the miracle cannot distinguish between dreams and reality, manifesting his flesh into a honeycomb. And as his veins flowed with not blood but honey, his empty husk has now completely dissolved. As such, all supplications from this land to the miracle were granted, only they were twistedly manifested, suffering from everlasting punishments. Witnessing the return of the miracle's atrocities, the Penitent One continues his journey to the elevated temples. Collapsing on his knees, plummeting from heights, and his bones shattering. The Penitent One endured the arduous journey for the temple. As he reaches the upper floor, Soaring through the clouds and faces the witness of the miracle. The miracle shows us mercy and bestows upon this shadow the right to speak. Never will I comprehend for what exalted reasons I was chosen to witness and narrate the events by which the miracle sought to return to us. When the twisted miracle spilled from the mother's womb, the midwife who first came to behold its manifestation became the one-winged witness, and unable to rest even in death, he perennially declared his testimony in his ethereal form. He informs that in order to reach the peak of the temple, one must release the doves confined with his corpse. containing my body shall be open and that the keys are well hidden in four separate locations. The spectral tower from on high, the basilica of the absent faces. As he walks past the animated frescoes and somewhat familiar faces, the penitent one faces Benedicta of the Endless Orson. Upon this perilous tower, standing atop the bottomless abyss, the Penitent One resists her apocryphal litany and the fathomless Rose of Saboria. And in his silence, he acquires the first key. Thereupon, 
emerged a cathedral sunken under the sea, and a severed tower nailed beneath the subsurface. And standing where it stood a thousand years ago, my great guilt at the ancient cathedral of Custodia. The penitent one enters the depositories of the two keys, defeating the works of the miracle, reeking with the stench of saline odor, to the tower's monstrosities that coated their victims with wax. The penitent one confronts the two sentinels. Audon of the Confraternity of Salt. Yet another penitent serving the miracle. The commands is drowned soldiers. And Sinodo, him of a thousand voices. Incinerating the trespassers. ever-changing visage. With the two sentinels defeated, and the two keys in his hands, the penitent one unlocks passage to two moons, a palace hidden beneath the lake's surface. Through its specular reflection, the symmetrical palace guides the penitent one to a hidden passage. As a depository of the final key, vicious monstrosities prey on the penitent one's head. But with myriads of prayers, and mastering the three weapons, Penitent One finally confronts the final sentinel. Susona, Fermosa Fembra. A woman most beautiful, she gazed at her reflection in the lake, praying that none other than herself shall be able to admire her beauty. And thus the miracle granted her wish by drowning the settlement beneath the lake. Hence, she remained alone at the deep bottom of the lake, appreciating her immaculate beauty for eternity. Yet another fruition of the twisted miracle. Striking at the fair lady's visage, adorned with her hollow reflection, the penitent one acquires the final key and releasing all the doves, he opens a way to ascend toward the heart, the highest reach of the elevated temple, where all things reigning are crimson. Amidst the peak where the beat of the great heart thunders, the penitent one follows the guidance of Chiros, as he had a thousand years ago. Gliding through the crimson thorns, the hordes of the miracle assembled to stop his advance. The penitent one finally enters the uppermost chamber. This waiting, this endless waiting, has been my penance. It appointed me first among penitents. Perpetual by its grace, perpetual in awaiting you an eternity. For I am the first penitent, and you shall be the last. To 
kill the blasphemous penitent who shall one day awaken and receive the returning child of the miracle of eternal who endured eternal penance to fulfill his solemn oath and the penitent one to continue this quest of expiation to prevent the resurgence of the miracle the long heralded battle of the two penitents has finally begun Now let the Crimson Bindings finish what they once began. My penance is far from over. With eruptive speed and tyrannical force, that brought even Crisanta to her knees. The last desecrator overwhelms the penitent one. Defeating the penitent one, bearing the will of the heavens, shall indeed be his first and last blasphemy. Final clash of steel in the presence of the Child of the Miracle. And only one penitent shall be able to keep their sworn oath. The child is born. The clouds open up before thee and shed crimson tears. Thus begins the work of the High Dramatist. Incorporeal and inscrutable fathers. I am the heir of your all encompassing light. Devotion itself, embodied in weathered flesh and gilded filigree. Your magnum opus. Though I am crowned with your glory, why do you censure my presence alongside you? What is this obscure darkness of unanswered cries that prevents me from understanding the purpose of my birth? Are the same crimson clouds that heralded my welcome the grave omen of your judgment? If this confrontation is proof of thy dignity of your glory, then so be it.
incarnate devotion. Having only just brought to this world, it cannot understand the man before its presence. Though it is the very embodiment of the long devotions toward the miracle, why the hostility against its birth? Why the denial of the divine will? But the penitent one's silence spoke for itself. The miracle that has been twisted by the high wills, even now after a thousand years, tainted the prayers with distortion, deterioration, and twisted this lad with its curse. Thus the endless vicious cycle must come to an end here and now. Doth thou respond to my pleas with pain? Pain in the flesh, yet your very flesh I am. Pain in the heart, yet your heart itself I hold. My punishment will be your sole legacy, and I shall die. I shall die reconciled with the mystery of my birth. The devotion of the many was made incarnate and suffered pain. The affliction cometh to an end, for the icon falls, and with it the miracle's designs and its will so capricious. And so you shall ascend, both in body and soul through dreamed kingdoms, to the holiest of places, to the cradle of all blessings, safe under our watchful eyes. And once there, you will be captured within the ancient canvas of light and time. The penitence is thus complete.